We want to welcome you to Hope Family Church. This is Haynes Ministries, and this is a word in due season. And I'm Steve Haynes, and I'm here with my wife, Susan. And we're going over the book of John, the Gospel of John. And we've done an introduction. We've done the first chapter. We're going to start on John chapter 2 tonight. But I think before we go any further, I'm going to ask my wife, Susan, to open up a prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day and for the provision you've made in our lives. And we thank you most of all for your word. And we pray that you reveal your words to us by your Holy Spirit and just plant your word deep in our heart that we would serve you in victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we went over John chapter 1, how the word became flesh. Remember, we talked about how Jesus has always been. Uh, he's always been. He's never had a beginning. His humanity had to be born, but as far as his deity, it had to be given. That's right. It had to be given. He couldn't. The deity couldn't be born. It already was. And then we uh, talked about how John the Baptist uh, declared that he was not the Christ, and that, in fact, he said, "Jesus, uh, he said, behold, the Lamb of God." And Jesus is picking his disciples, and Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel, and so on and so forth. And we're starting in chapter 2. This is where uh, Jesus changes water to wine. And not only that, but it, he also clears the temple. Uh, next time we get together, we're going to talk about Jesus and Nicodemus. But uh, tonight, we're going to talk about how Jesus changed the water in the wine praise God and how he clears the temple <clears throat> it says in the gospel of John chapter 2 ver verse 1 it says on the third day a wedding took place at, a, at Cana in Galilee Jesus' mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding when the wine was gone Jesus' mother said to him they have no more wine you know that the uh, uh, Jewish custom that that was that was hard to take when you run out of wine, amen. Uh, that was a top priority thing. It's a big embarrassment. A big embarrassment, yeah, to this wedding party. And Jesus and his disciples had uh, been invited. And it says in verse four, it says, "Dear woman, why do you involve me?" Jesus replied, "My time has not yet come." Jesus hadn't done any miracles yet. He hadn't preached anything he you know but this is where his ministry begins this is where his miracle takes place amen this is where jesus launches forth amen and it says in verse five look what jesus mother said she didn't she didn't say anything back or anything about it she just said uh his mother said to the servants do whatever he tells you she knew jesus had something amen she knew that he was the son of God, that he could do miracles, and that the servants better do exactly what he says. Amen. Well, that's kind of a revelation to us, too. God wants us to do what his word tells us to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said uh, that's how we love him, you know, by obeying his word and things. And, but it says uh, in verse 6, it says, nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Every one brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. This, uh, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Canaan, Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. Praise God. You know, let's look at this uh, in verse 6. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. 
I think six of these. You know, that's that's a bunch of wine. There must have been a bunch of people there. Yeah, must have been. <laughs> but the governor of the feast said, you saved the best till the last. Well, that's exactly what God is doing with us. Amen. Praise God. You know, he's saving the best for last, and that's us, the church. He's saving the best for last, and he's coming for his bride Amen. without spot or wrinkle. Amen. Amen. And these stone jars were used for cleaning. Uh, no doubt, you know, people would wash their feet and hands and their mouth and their face. And, and uh, you know, these things are probably dirty and, and no telling what. But uh, how many knows it's not what's on the outside, but it's what's on the inside. Jesus turned what was on the inside and he turned it clean. And that's exactly what he does with us. Amen. He takes all the impurities out, and then he touches us, and he turns us clean. Amen. Amen. Did you have something you wanted to... Well, I was impressed with the fact that, um, you know, when Jesus did a miracle, he didn't go around and say, Behold, look what I've done. And no one knew what had happened except for the disciples knew, because it says later that the disciples knew. And whenever it's telling about it, it says the servants knew. But the master of feast didn't know. No one else knew what was going on except for Jesus and, and his mother knew and possibly his brothers that were there. I don't know, but but um, Jesus knew, his mother knew, the servants knew, and his disciples knew. And, and Jesus wasn't doing these things just to say, look at me. However, People did see the miracles, and they did turn their attention towards Jesus, the Son of God, and they did cause them to start listening to him and taking notice. Praise God. Amen. And, you know, he didn't think he was too good for the servants to notice. Amen. You know, sometimes people categorize different classes of people in life, and but God doesn't do that. That's exactly right. The servants are just as important as the disciples were. That's right. Well, it's just like uh, when Jesus, uh, you know, the angels came and, and visited the shepherds. That's right. You know, he, they announced to, Jesus' birth. Announced Jesus' birth, and of course, they uh, a star was shown to the well to the whole people. But the wise men, you know, they they he 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 Jesus came for the wealthy and the poor. Amen. That's right. Uh, he came for those who has much and who, those who had nothing. Amen. You know, the shepherds, they probably just had the clothes on their back and a staff and and uh, cared for the sheep. And, yeah. You know, and uh, the wise men had gold and frankincense and myrrh and camels and servants and I don't know what all, you know. But to Jesus, it didn't matter. Amen. Amen. And if you're watching and you're listening, it doesn't matter what your status is in the world. You could be a homeless person. Or you could be uh, someone, you know, that you feel your low esteem. Well, in God's eyes, your high esteem, amen. That's right. And, and contrary-wise, you could be the owner of an oil company or something. And Jesus came for everybody. He came amen. for everyone. He came to seek and save those that were lost. Amen. But this is where his ministry begins. Uh, I'll tell you what, Susan, put your finger on Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10. I mean, not, we're not going to read it right yet, but just put your finger on there. And uh, we're going to read about how Jesus clears the temple. And uh, <clears throat> it says in verse 12, After this he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples, there they stayed for a few days. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered, scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? Now, you might think, Man, Jesus had quite a temper. Now, he had a holy temper, amen, I guess you could say. Uh, holy boldness. 
Um, it, it wasn't the fact that the people in the at the uh, church were doing or the tabernacle were doing anything wrong wrong I mean as far as selling the doves and the cattle because the people were buying them to sacrifice amen that was God's requirement that uh, the things be sacrificed it was the fact that they were there for the money and and not for the for the reason, amen? They weren't there to get God glory. And what they would do, the money changers, you ever wondered why they called them money changers? I'll tell you why they called them money changers. For one thing, you had to have temple money to buy these sheep and oxen and doves. You had to have temple money. And to get temple money, you had to use real money to buy the temple money. And they'd charge you two or three times as much that, that this temple money was worth. So in other words, these people were getting robbed. And these money changers were making a killing. And so that's one thing Jesus was wanting to put a stop to. Uh, people getting cheated and lied to and, and taken advantage of uh, in, in, in the temple. And... Uh, you know, they'd turn God's house into a den of thieves, amen. Yes, because we see that in another place where Jesus ran them off. He said, it, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. And you turned it into a den of thieves. Amen. So that's exactly why Jesus was doing that. It's not that he was a bad person or mean or hateful or anything like that. He was watching out for God the Father, amen, and his house. Then in verse 17, we're in John chapter 2, verse 17. It says, His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, What miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. So when Jesus said he could raise that temple in three days, he was talking about his body. And he was talking about in the future when he was going to die on the cross. Yes. for our sins and then he was going to raise again on the third day God was going to raise him on the day amen the amen you know Jesus he is the way the truth and the life he is the, the gate amen he is the, the way to the straight and narrow pathway amen amen it says in verse 23 it says now while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast Many people saw the miraculous signs he was doing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all men. He did not need man's testimony about man, for he knew what was in a man. Hey, go ahead and read Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the hearts, I test the minds, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Amen. It's, God knows our heart. Amen. Did you have me? I didn't know if you want me to read more yeah, than go 9 ahead. and 10 go ahead. or yeah, not. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Read through what here? I don't know. Just oh. Um. Well, that's probably all you needed, I guess. Yeah, so. I mean, I'm just reading about the heart. Yes. And, uh, you know, God knows the heart. Amen. You know, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. That's right. You know, I know that King David was a man that uh, did wrong here and there, but he was, God said he was a man after his own heart, you know. And uh, how many knows that God loved us while we were yet sinners? That's right. And here in just a few moments, my wife is going to give you an opportunity to come to know this Jesus that we're talking about. Uh, John chapter 2 was kind of a short chapter. Next time we come together, well, we're going to go over John chapter 3. And uh, 
we'll talk about Nicodemus and uh, and John the Baptist's testimony about Jesus, and and you don't want to miss it. And chapter four talks about the Samaritan woman, and and uh, there's just a lot of good things in here. Uh, may I say yeah. something? Okay, on this part here, where we're talking in uh, John two, verses twenty-three to twenty-five, it says, "Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name." when they saw the signs that he did. So we know he did other signs. He emptied the temple and he was bold and he wasn't afraid of the Sanhedrin, but he must have done other signs there too. Yeah. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men had no need that any should testify a man because he knew what was in them. And we were talking about how, uh, Pastor Steve was talking about how God knows your heart. Well, these people, the reason it says Jesus did not commit himself to them because uh, there was many there that recognized him as the Messiah, but they were looking for a Messiah that was going to lead them into battle right now. And that'll happen someday, you know, but not now when he returns, that'll happen. But that, that wasn't time for it. And they, and they were wanting to, you know, he knew what they were doing. You know, people were wanting they were wanting to make him the king right then and there and uh, crown him Messiah and Lord of Lords, you know, and, and yes, God wants us to believe in him, but there's a time and a place for everything. And it wasn't the time. And, and like you said, their hearts weren't right. They had other motives. They were wanting him to turn the government around and everything, but uh, God wants us to turn our hearts around first. Yeah. That's more important to him than turning the government around. We need to turn our hearts towards God. Amen. And commit our ways towards Him. <clears throat> Amen. Well, I think we're going to close right there. And um, we'll, re, we'll restart next time on John chapter 3 and, and uh, talk about Nicodemus. And, uh, you know, he was a teacher too. Uh, teacher of Israel of Israel and here Jesus is teaching him spiritual things that he knew not of and uh, but anyway uh, maybe you're watching and you're listening to this uh, Bible study has touched your heart and you want to be a part of Haynes Ministries well you can be a part of Haynes Ministries if you'd like to send an offering don't send your tithes that belongs to your local church but if you'd like to send an offering you can go to our webpage, HanesMinistries.org, and you can click on the giving tab. And there's a way you can get through PayPal, but if you don't trust the internet, there's a, an address there. And it's uh, Haynes Ministries, P.O. Box 1406, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma 74013. You can mail it the an offering the old fashioned way. Uh, or maybe you want to leave a prayer. Ask for prayer on our prayer line, or our prayer line is 918-893-5522. If you have a prayer request, you can call that or email us at ministries at gmail.com. And uh, anyway, uh, that's all the announcements I have, and I just want to, if my wife can think of anything else, she can add to it, but she's going to offer a salvation prayer to those of you that might want to know Jesus. And um, if you want to come to know Jesus today, you feel, uh, you feel quickened in your spirit that this is your day to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know, Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. So whoever believes in him would not perish, but will have eternal life in heaven. So God sent Jesus to come into the world to be the Savior. He sent him to you. He sent him to me. He sent him to Pastor Steve. He sent him for all of us who would accept him. Jesus died on the cross in your place to pay the penalty for your sins. The third day, God rose him up again from the dead. And you can have this kind of life if you just accept him by faith. Let's pray this prayer. 
Father in heaven, Father in heaven, thank you for sending your Son Jesus. Thank you for sending your Son Jesus to die in my place on the cross. To die in my place on the I cross. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I accept you as my Lord. And I accept Savior. your forgiveness for I my sins. Your forgiveness for my sins. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer in faith, believing you are now a child of God, all, all your sinful past is wiped out, the guilt of it, the pain of it. You give it to God. Get out your Holy Bible. Start reading it with us. If you don't have one, get one. Get one. You can get them on the Internet. You can download them on your phone through Life Church. Uh, you can go down to a second-hand store. They always are full of Bibles that they're selling for a very good price. Uh, just get a Bible and start reading your Bible. You don't know where to start. Start where we are, to, not what we've been talking on, the Gospel of John. And join us at 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time every Sunday. And we're studying God's Word we're studying it in a way that anyone can learn from it. Whether you're a mature believer or a young believer, we're studying God's Word in a way that everyone can understand it. And if you want to go back and, and read our past Bible studies, our goal is to go through the whole Old Testament, I mean the whole New Testament, and then eventually the Old Testament, uh, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book, and so that you will know all the wonderful things that God has for you. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful week. God bless.